Okay, we're back here live at EMC World. This is Silicon Angle's exclusive coverage of EMC World 2013. Uh, this is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. All the news here has been all about software-defined storage, software-defined data center, flash, fast data, big data, abstracting away the complexities and, and, and business value or transformation. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and I'm joined with my co-host. Hi everybody, I'm Dave Vellante at Wikibon.org. Praveen Akaraju is here, he's the CEO of VCE, uh, two-time, at least, uh, CUBE guest. We had you on, Praveen, at uh, VMworld last year. Thanks for coming back on. Yeah, absolutely, pleasure to be here. Yeah, good to see you. So it's almost a year in yep. uh, for you. So um, tell me, what'd you learn? You know, surprises, you know? Sure. The good, the bad, how have you applied what you learned? You know, give us your take. You know, I think it's uh, it's been an amazing ride. Uh, you know, when, when I kind of came into this, uh, you know, we were looking at this as primarily a, a solution for us to help our help accelerate, you know, deployment of Cisco and EMC technologies. But you know, what I found was, um, given the tremendous amount of change that we have going on, I mean, just the announcements this week, you know, at Open Summit, Open Stack, right? Every week you have something new going on in the technology space. Huge amount of disruption. Um, you know, a lot of our customers are dealing with tremendous amount of complexity. And the real value proposition that VC was able to bring to the table was a fundamental simplification of a core piece of the data center infrastructure, right? And we've been able to do that now systematically over 600 customers, and that value proposition is something that tr resonated tremendously. The biggest surprise for me was the level of customer loyalty we had. You know, I, you know, I, I've uh, I worked with customers in the enterprise and commercial service provider space. And I got to tell you, this set of customers that VCE has are absolutely the most loyal, and it's a testimony to the team's tremendous, uh, you know, performance and focus on customer experience. For right. being, we've been we've been following VC for a while. One thing we have noticed is the customer loyalty, but the, the, they're big names, so it's not like yes. small little proof of concept. You have big right. customers exactly. uh, in complicated production environments. Right. So let's roll back the clock a couple of years. Tell us what's going on now, vis-a-vis -vis what was going on just two years ago. I mean, yep. you know, obviously virtualizing SAP is one element of it. Sure. It always scales into other use cases. What is the, I mean, what is the current state of these customer deployments? What's growing? Yep. What kind of is not growing? What have you guys learned? What are you doubling down? On. You know, the initial stage is most of the VC, uh, you know, VBlock deployments were around, you know, specific sort of use cases, specific applications that a business unit might have within a company, right? They said, all right, you know, we need to get this thing up and running quickly, find, prove yourself that you can actually do this in the time you're saying, in 30 to 45 days, and we'll give you a go, right? So a lot of the deployments we initially had was a specific application use case. What we're seeing now is a fundamental change in the use case. And we've, A, we've broadened our customer set, we started off primarily with uh, large enterprises, Fortune 500, but now we, we're getting a lot of traction with service providers, systems integrators, as well as you know going down the, the chain into the medium and the small businesses as well with the launch of new products, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But from a use case perspective, we've gone from focusing, delivering specific applications to being a core part of data center consolidation projects, uh, you know, application replatforming, yeah. right? Uh, you know, cloud deployments, if you look at it from a service provider perspective. So, uh, you know, we're now uh, accepted as a, uh, as a fundamental way to develop the next generation data center. Uh, Go ahead, sorry. Now I was going to say, so uh, in, in support of that basic inflection we saw in February, uh, we basically had our biggest ever product launch where we basically expanded, doubled the size of our product portfolio. You know, uh, the high end we, double the performance, and introduced two new VBlock systems, the 100 and the 200, which allowed us to go after emerging markets, small and medium businesses, as well as you know, expanding the footprint for large enterprises. Uh, we've created unique intellectual property in terms of software, and the notion there was, you take this notion of simplicity of the infrastructure to the operational level. So that was vision intelligent operations. And then we introduced our first specialized system, where we're now talking about how do you accelerate the deployment of applications in the, in the data center. SAP HANA being the first instance of that. Well, and that IP move is, is big for you guys. It's, Absolutely. You know, culturally, you sort of become more than just a sort of reseller of Absolutely. others' equipment, right? Yeah, we think of ourselves as a solutions company, right? And we're in the business of basically facilitating that journey towards that next generation data center cloud. Mm -hmm. Praveen, you know, you guys have an interesting product. It's at the high end, it's an executive sale. It's a, it's a, it's a C-level kind of sale. Absolutely. And uh, we, we've talked to a lot of CIOs over the past six months, Dave and I, yeah. trying to understand the hyperscale, software-defined yeah. data center, and all those kind of nuances. And one thing we've noticed is that they're really attracted to the shiny new toy. Yeah. Right? You know, hey, this is our OpenStack, HANA. Yeah. 
You yes. know, all these things are out that get their attention. Yes. So they get all uh, excited, intoxicated yeah. by this new, tr the trends, and yes. big data, among other things, and they're legitimate trends. Sure. Um, but when it comes down to it, it's like, oh, they go back to the ranch, and they're like, yeah. okay, how do, we do, how do we deploy this? So, yeah. one, you got a dynamic of a market that's pretty active yep. in terms of new capabilities, transformations, we're seeing the marketing here. Right. But, but one thing that comes back down to is, and all the CIOs is, the ones that are doing the best projects are about time to value. Can you right. share with the perspective of how fast you can get to showing the customers yeah. the value? Like, is it weeks, is it days, is it yeah. months? I mean, what are some of the, the recent data points you can share on, yeah. on that? Yeah, no, it's a great question, and I think at the end of the day, you know, rubber hits the road, right? There's an ROI, and <clears throat> there is an investment case that, that the CIO needs to make. So, um, we think of this in kinds of a couple of, couple of buckets. Right? The first, obviously, is what we call time to business, which is the amount of time it takes for the customer to stand up the new infrastructure. Uh, and, and this is material in a lot of ways. Now, if you, if you take a look at um, you know, uh, a, a, someone like a visa, right? They wanted to get the mobile applications um, uh, into production rapidly. It was a competitive imperative for them. And uh, we were able to get that thing up and running in a couple of months as opposed to the six months plus time frame that they had originally planned for. So, so their plan was what, six months? Six months plus, right? I mean, six to nine months basically, depending on the current, their infrastructure they had. So we were able to compress that whole cycle into basically under two months. So that was material because it allowed them to get into the competitive market space rapidly, right? That's, that's one example where this real definitive business value to the 30 to 45 day process that you know, we drive. The second key area is in terms of cost savings. I mean, you know, I, I have at least three examples, and Purdue Pharma is a good one, where uh, the CTO there is essentially committed to the CFO a schedule of budget cuts that he would basically sign up for and he used the V-Block as a way to get him to that point. And the way we were able to do that is basically we, we provided virtualization, we simplified his operational costs because you know, as a pre-engineered system, we provide upgrade and support capability afterward. So he was able to dramatically reduce the cost of operations as well as the cost of his infrastructure and meet his commitments to his CTO. And we have him you know, quoted, you know, in fact, yeah. one of the videos in the launch, he, he articulated that, right? And the third bucket we look at is performance, right? And, and this, is, this is something that obviously is, um, is at the heart of, lot of, of what a, a, you know, an engineering team, for example, looks at. The way the applications run on our infrastructure, we do a lot of engineering back-end work which, which essentially allows us to provide very specific guidance in terms of tuning of performance parameters. Uh, and that enables, you know, in case of a bank in Australia, they basically told us, look, we recovered the cost of the V-Block within six months because of the performance gains and optimizations that they saw, which allowed them to decrease the amount of software licenses they had to procure. Right? So that's another example of how we provide value. So when you kind of look at it, so let me dig, let me dig in that because one of the things that's come up, we were just uh, on day one here at EMC World, we interviewed um, the CEO of a company called Service Mesh. Yeah. And um, he made and then and they I know they're kind of in this orchestration layer, but they're in the same kind of sure. area you guys are playing in. He said we saved a customer over a hundred million dollars. Yeah. And, and I'm like, oh, okay, come on. Yeah. He, he was firm. No, we have proof points. Can you give any color to order of magnitude kind of cost savings you guys are seeing with VCE? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, depending on the customer use case, we've, anyway, we've seen anywhere from two to three X cost savings. So this is basically comparing a V-block based uh, deployment versus a traditional deployment or a competitor's deployment, right? And that the cost savings there is inclusive of the operational costs, the uh, efficiency costs in terms of you know, time to value, right? As well as, you know, we from a pricing perspective, Right, where the way we configure things, we're, we're more optimized. Right, virtualization is a huge game changer for us. UCS by far is the highest performance and the best architecture from a server perspective, which gives us huge amount of advantages in that in the area. So, I would say two to three x is kind of what we've seen as an as an average. Of those three variables, time savings, cost savings, and performance, which yeah. ones do you say that you you know slam dunk, no problem, you know any issues in terms of people understanding them, and which ones do you see are the ones that you think people don't don't really understand or need to understand about? I mean, is it yeah. the time savings piece or is it the cost savings or <laughs> is there yeah. one that you could dial up and say, you know, amplify more? You know, one of the things we, obviously, when you talk about cost savings, I mean, as you said, right, there's always a question mark, oh, really, I mean, 
Yeah. You know, can you actually do two to three X cost savings? So, um, you know, we There's skeptics have a, in that area. I mean, yeah. I mean even and if it's legit cost so. savings, they're like, yeah, what are you, it's a number yeah. game, they show me real numbers. Yeah, fairly yeah. so. You know, I cut my teeth, you know, in the service provider space, right? I sold a lot of telcos, and, and trust me, I mean, <laughs> You talk about cost savings, I mean, they really have a very rigorous process. They have explicit negotiators. So what, what we do basically is we have a TCO tool, right? So we provide the TCO tool to the customer for them to input their parameters, and then we, we're able to, in their own use case, we're able to demonstrate the kind of savings, and then we back that up when we actually deliver it. So a lot of times I think the cost savings aspect of it is, you know, it could be a, you know, just a marketing number I could throw out two to three X. It, it, it really is, there's a method behind the madness in how we deliver it. I mean, we've now ironed out the time to value, time to business, 30 to 45 days. We've done that consistently over 600 customers. Uh, you know, we have customers like Skyscape, for example, who bet their business on the fact that we can deliver in 30 to 45 days, right? They're a startup, they provide um, cloud services to the UK government, right? And the chairman was there, I was meeting with him yesterday, and he said, Praveen, I'm depending on you guys to deliver this thing in 30 to 45 days, right? My whole business plan depends on me executing that fast. They're fundamentally changing the agility that of services that they're able to provide. So I think um, you know, a lot of times, this is the reason why we have the loyalty, right? Uh, you know, we, it's a complex sale because converged infrastructure is about bringing things together. Well, can I put it together myself? You know, somebody else has a similar value proposition. But once the customer comes on board, we are able to back up our claims and that's why we have that 65% you know, loyalty, right? Praveen, I feel like we're entering the third phase here of this whole converged infrastructure. So 2009, 2010 was kind of the early adopters. You have yeah. to prove it to me. Uh, 2010, 11, early 11 or 12 even was, okay, we're gathering proof points, uh, right. we're gaining validation. Right. And now we're entering sort of the third phase, which I don't know what you call it, maybe it's yeah. the exploitation phase. Yeah. So what are the things that, first of all, do you yeah. buy that sort of phases, and, sure. and what are the things that, that you all need to do to yeah. take advantage of that next yeah. wave? So you're absolutely right. I mean, I think, um, you know, we feel like we, we are spending less time convincing customers that converged infrastructure is a viable way for them to mm -hmm. build their data centers. Uh, you know, we're having lesser conversations about, you know, we can do it ourselves better, is it cheaper, et cetera, right? Most CIOs, even down in the, into the ranks, are now understand the value of converged infrastructure. So the next step here really is about, you know, what our customers are talking to us about is to say, great, now I'm, I'm building a brand new data center, I'm insourcing, bringing it back, or consolidating data centers, we're doing it on the Wii block, right? Um, now what else can you guys do for us in terms of taking this notion of simplification, right? Can you train my folks to operate in a converged infrastructure environment? Because one of the things we don't talk about is, you know, the talent needs to evolve, right? To be able to deal with all these capabilities. And in a lot of IT shops, I mean, you have, you don't have uniform availability of talent that understands everything that's going on, right? So um, we need to do a better job of trying to give our customers the, the support system to then start getting the maximum benefit out of the converged infrastructure. And then as we say, and we're doing that by both enabling training, right, uh, having on-site residents who, who really help train the uh, customers, engineers, but also trying to bring in a lot of the application infrastructure into the factory. So the thing that VC does the best is we do things that normally other customers or our partners or, or, or you know, competitors would do in the customer's floor in the factory, right? So more we can bring into the factory, more we can deliver the simplification. So I think that's where we're headed, you know, simplifying operations, simplifying the application onboarding onto the convergent and, and as part of that application onboarding, how much of that is bringing sort of knowledge about those applications into the system at the factory? Yeah, you know, I think, um, you know, we, we, our goal is not to be, you know, the, the application experts, right? I mean, we, we, um, we will not be the SAP experts or the, you know, the Oracle experts, but I think what we can be is to essentially make sure that the infrastructure is optimized for uh, a HANA system. Uh, infrastructure is optimized for a, an ERP system, right? Is optimized for um, a SharePoint or an exchange. Uh, so those are the things that we focus on. We can build in the application performance management tools so the customer can then, you know, once they get the vBlog, they can use those tools to better optimize their performance and deliver things. So we're in the business of delivering the infrastructure that supports and facilitates easy application onboarding. You know, our goal is not to try and be the application experts. Right? All right, Praveen, we got, we got in the hook, but I'll give you the last word. Any final thoughts that you want to share with us? No, audience? for us, uh, you know, 2013 is an exciting year. Um, you know, there's a lot going on in the market space. We feel like we have a, a lead in the market. Um, you know, we are, we're fortunate to have EMC and Cisco and VMware supporting us, and I think uh, our customers are our best advocates. So, 
Um, really excited about where we're headed and you know, look forward to catching up with you guys next time. Excellent, well Praveen, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE and uh, really appreciate your time. Keep it right there everybody, this is theCUBE, Silicon Angles production from EMC World. We're live in Las Vegas, day three. We'll be right back with our next guest right after this.